There's probably about a gabillion different garden obelisk videos here on YouTube. The problem is they all look the same. And the wood ones you buy online can be very expensive. So in this video, for just 18 bucks, I'm going to show you how to make a modern style garden obelisk that's going to be perfect for your classic cottage garden. So stick around. The first thing you need to do is to decide whether or not you want it to patina in the sun, or you want to stain it, or you can paint it. I painted mine tricorn black. I think now's the best time to go ahead and paint or stain it. That way you don't have to get in all those little nooks and crannies. Also, I just want to mention that in the description will be a full list of tools and cuts and things like that that you need to make. I'll also reference that throughout the video. Okay, so there's only one part of this entire build that's difficult, and it's that very first cut. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, now this is that cut that I'm referring to. So this is the top of the obelisk, and this is the angle that we need on the legs in order to create a 30-inch base. So I did some trial and error there, and I came up with a 78-degree cut. Now, if you failed geometry like I did, um, you can use inches. So just take a screenshot of this, and this is going to show you how to make that cut using inches. So if you want to forget degrees and angles, um, that's what you would use. So to figure out 78 degrees, we use this pivot point on this speed square, and you're going to put it right here in the corner of the wood, and then you're going to angle it over. And if you look down here, we got 80 degrees, 79, and 78. So we need a 78 degree angle. Okay, I promise you this build is actually super easy, but we have one more thing to worry about. And that is um, cutting this on a miter saw, which I would recommend doing. If you have a table saw, that'd probably be even better. But you could actually technically use a jigsaw, a circular saw, a hand saw. You could use pretty much anything. I want a really clean cut on this though. And so I'm using my miter saw. The problem is miter saws only go to 50 degrees and we need a 78 degree cut. So in the description is YouTube short that's gonna show you how to set up this jig. This gives you a 45 degree angle to cut on. Now, what we can actually do is when we go back to zero, if we place a piece of lumber here, we're still cutting at 45 degrees. This allows us to make a 78 degree cut on this saw. So if we take 45 degrees, which we have here, and subtract that from 78, we get 33. So I move my saw over to 33 degrees, I lock it in, and now when I place my lumber in this jig right here, as you can see, I'm going to get that 78 degree cut that I want. Okay, so no more difficult cuts. We got rid of the jig. We're back to square one here. Now this is going to be the center piece to the top of the obelisk. So all of the angles are going to attach to each side of this obelisk. And uh, we need to measure out from the bottom of one of our legs, a seven and quarter, seven and a quarter inch piece. We're gonna mark a line and we're gonna go ahead and make a cut there. Now again, this is going to be the top piece that all of the legs are going to be attached to. Okay, so here's that seven and a quarter inch piece, and here are two of our legs that we just cut. So if we put these together, we're gonna go ahead and set some glue on them, and we're gonna clamp it all together. This is going to be our first two legs, and then the other two legs are gonna attach on the other side. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, just run a bead of glue. If I can get this sucker open. All right, so we'll run some glue on each end. We'll go ahead and put these together. And then I'll take one of our small clamps here, and then we'll just do our best to kind of snug it all together. I'll go ahead and let this sit overnight. Okay, so now's a great time to figure out how tall we want this obelisk to be. Now, I want mine to be five feet tall, so we need to measure from the top and go straight down to five feet. We're gonna use one of our other legs here to mark that five feet. And then we can scribe a straight line across the bottom here and cut the bottom of the legs. The gap right here is the same as the gap right here for the most part. And uh, I then had to figure out how I wanted these cross members to be spaced. So what we're doing is we're spacing the first one at seven and a half. And then, you know, this one's going to be at 15 and each one down the line is going to be seven and a half inches on center, separate from the one above it or below it. How do we know that's one, two, three 
on our cross braces here, you just want to measure from this corner to that corner, and then that corner to this corner. And as long as those are within, you know, a millimeter or two of each other, then this is going to look straight as can be. And then at that point, just take a pencil and then scribe this line underneath. Okay, so that's going to hide any imperfections. If it's not, you know, perfectly certain degree here and a certain degree here, nobody's ever going to know. Um, and you'll be able to just have a nice clean cut. So again, just take your pencil and mark the lines below and then take that over to the saw. You're going to do that with this one, this one, and this one. You have it. We got one, two, three cross braces. I went ahead and stood everything up and uh, making sure that these legs are straight. We're making sure that the distance between this leg and this leg is the same as this leg and this leg. So we stood everything up. Um, I went ahead to clamp the top. You notice I had to sand this. It's been so hot in Northern California that this sucker actually uh, melted to the floor in the garage. Um, so I ended up having to sand some of it down, uh, but no big deal. Um, the braces here, I've just been gluing and then air nailing underneath with these, this kind of rinky dink air nailer that I have, but you could use screws, you could use finishing nails, you could use anything. So now that we've got everything measured out, the next step is to go ahead and attach these legs here. So I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of glue and then air nail it in. Now we want to make sure this doesn't get blown over in the wind. So I use some of the leftover wood to make these simple stakes, just cut the bottoms at an angle hammer them into the ground and secure them with a simple screw. Okay, so there it is sitting in my garden, the finished project, and I couldn't be more excited to have it. I love the way that it turned out. It's a sleek, modern, one-of-a-kind take on that traditional cottage garden obelisk. They add height, they add structure, they're a great focal point for the garden. Now, once I got it stood up and placed in the garden, I did decide last minute to screw it all together. So each little section here, I did put screws on the outside. Um, I just think it felt stronger and sturdier and I think it's going to last much longer. So between the glues, the glue, the nail and the screws, um, that sucker's put together really well. So it's going to last a long time. Now what to grow on an obelisk? I mean, you have so many options, but climbing roses, clematis, um, any kind of vegetable that grows up a trellis would be great. Um, sweet potato vines, really popular. Um, you could grow just like star jasmine. What I found today at the garden center, was this pink and yellow uh, called pink lemonade. It's a honeysuckle. And this is my pollinator bed. So I'm trying to get pollinators to my vegetable garden, and which is really important. And these are pollinator magnets. On top of that, they smell amazing. So when I saw this at the clearance rack for, I think like four or $5, it was just, it was the sign. It was meant to be. So um, putting this in the center of the obelisk is going to look really cool. Really, really pretty. Now, if you look at the back of my garden here, I have this green potting table. We built this for a hundred bucks and that was at the height of that lumber crisis we had. So I'm sure nowadays it's probably more like 75 bucks, something like that. So if you want to build, if you have a weekend where you want to build some cool stuff for your garden, this is it. You can put the uh, obelisk for less than 18 bucks and the potting table together for probably about 75. So you're getting both of these for your garden for, I don't know, Saturday afternoon of projects and uh, less than a hundred bucks. So I'll put a link to the video that I made uh, where we, we built that potting bench right here. And if you wanna learn all about pollinators, which this is my pollinator bed, my vegetable garden, make sure you check out that video here. So thanks for checking out the channel. I'll catch you in our next one. Bye.